Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be discussing SSH multiplexing. SSH multiplexing is the ability to carry multiple SSH sessions over a single TCP connection. One of the main advantages of this is that the overhead of creating new TCP connections and negotiating the secure connection is eliminated once your first connection has been established. The overall number of connections that a machine may accept is a finite resource, and the limit is more noticeable on some machines than on others, and varies greatly depending on both load and usage. There is also a significant delay when opening a new connection. Activities that repeatedly open new connections can be significantly sped up by using multiplexing. All right, to demonstrate the differences between multiplexing and standalone sessions, I'm going to SSH into one of the servers located on my home network. So over on the right, you're going to see the socket that it creates. So we will run a watch slash l slash temp, which is the directory that I have set for the socket to be created in. And then on the left side, I'm going to run the command SSH server one. And then as soon as it connects, we're going to exit. But before we do that, we need to time it. And then we will run it and compare the results. So that took 0.237 seconds. And over on the right, you should see the socket that was created here. And now we will run it again. And you see it's about 10 times faster the second time. And this server is located on the same subnet that I am. It's sitting right next to me. If this was a remote server located across the internet, this time would be significantly greater. The OpenSSH client supports multiplexing its outgoing connections using the control master, control path, and control persist configuration directives, which will be defined in SSH config. This is located in your home directory under .ssh config for the user configuration file. And it is located under etsy ssh, ssh underscore config for the global configuration file. For most cases, you'll want to define this in your local SSH config. To set up SSH multiplexing, we're first going to vim into our local SSH config file. So we're going to vim.ssh config. And down underneath our hosts, we are going to create this entry here, host star. And I have a note here that says it enables SSH multiplexing. And these are the three definitions that we need to put in, the three directives that we need to define. So the first one, control master auto, determines whether SSH will listen for control connections and what to do about them. The next one, control path, sets the location of the control socket used by multiplex sessions. Control sockets are removed automatically when the master connection has ended. And control persist can be used in conjunction with control master. If control persist is set to yes, then it will leave the master connection open in the background to accept new connections until it is either explicitly killed closed or ended at a predefined timeout. And in this case, we are ending it at a predefined timeout, so after 30 minutes. So once I SSH into a server, it's going to leave the socket open for 30 minutes before it closes it out. Also to note, the control path can be set to any location that your user has permissions to write to. So it doesn't have to be in slash temp. That's just where I chose to put it. And then also to clarify what this is here, so R is going to be the remote name of the user, at, and then H is going to be the remote host, colon, and then this is the remote port. 
Once we have SSH multiplexing set up in our configuration file, we're ready to use it. So in my case, it's going to be writing those sockets to slash temp. So let's take a look in there first. So we're going to take a look in here and you can see that I have one socket already defined. So let's go ahead and remove that. So we're gonna remove Nate. And now it's gone. And now let's SSH into a server. And in the host file, we define multiplexing under the host star, um, which is, means it's going to match all hosts. And it will work on any server that I have defined in there. If you only want uh, SSH multiplexing to be supported on just one server, you would define it under the host for just that server. So let's go ahead and SSH into server. Let's do this first. We are going to open another window and I'll show that there is no host file in there, or there is no socket in there. We'll SSH into server 01 over here. LS, and there it is, uh, the dot one, dot five. We'll come back over. We will exit out. And then the second time we remote into it, it will not have to reestablish a secure connection or go through the TCP three-way handshake. So it's much faster. We'll exit out of there. Now we will SSH into a second server. So SSH server 02. And now you'll see that it created two sockets. So now we have one for both of the servers. And the same thing, we'll exit out of here, server two, and much quicker the second time. Besides speeding up subsequent SSH connections, there are two major use cases where you would want to use SSH multiplexing. The first would be if you're limiting TCP connections on a firewall. So if I remote back in to one of my servers, SSH server two, for example, and we take a look at the firewall configuration. We can see under the third rule, the 22 TCP, that, it, that it's limited. That means that there's only a certain amount of TCP connections per minute that are allowed to the server. If you're making many SSH connections to it, you could exceed that limit and essentially DOS yourself, not allow you to gain access to your server. Using SSH multiplexing would remove that possibility because there's only ever one TCP connection. The second use case is if you're using a jump box and there's multiple servers behind that jump box. Using a traditional SSH connection, you would have to have a separate TCP connection for every server that you connect to behind it. If you're using SSH multiplexing, you could have one TCP connection to the jump box and then a individual TCP connection to every server after that. So it would save many connections to the jump box itself, speeding up performance. I hope you found this video helpful and be sure to like and subscribe. I can't grow without you.